So the goal of this meeting is to look at Q1 priorities. And although we already did this and just make sure that they're set. And this is going to be the day zero for the Q1. So admin guys, are you ready to start? Yeah, I think I can speak. I, I prepared just one slide. I can share the screen about that. Um, uh, John, are you? Did you allow to sh screen sharing? I think so. Everyone should be able to share screen. Yeah, I think I think I can. Okay, can you see it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we have prepared the uh, project board. So it's available on the. Uh, GitHub page here, the project number 16, where we are collecting, where we are tracking all our activities. So our idea for the next uh, four months is to work in on high roads, to verify high roads adoption feasibility, uh, to improve development of the Pulsar network, uh, expand GTN test uh, automation, and determine suitability of RecGenie for reference data manager, and uh, Deploy existing tools to the CVMFS network and use that uh, that repository in production. So our milestones for that uh, for Q1 are: uh, we would like to uh, have uh, the use Galaxy Dostar service able to to switch to to load tools from the CMFS network. Uh, we would like to run performance tests on iRoads and compare that times with with the, the, the storage that usegalaxy.org is using now. And if the test is a success, the idea is to deploy iRoads uh, uh, to main and use for uh, new data. Uh, we will prepare the storage roadmap. And uh, again, uh, <clears throat> the idea is that uh, GTN automation test suite uh, will be used also by the .org uh, uh, Galaxy server. And uh, we would like also to prepare a report on the issues and anomalies that uh, we are collecting and executing common workflows against the production Pulsar site of our uh, Pulsar network. More or less is the idea that we have for the Q1 period. <clears throat> Any question? I, I have one question. Uh, so when we're going to switch all three galaxies to CVMFS to pull the tools, uh, we need to at some point review the tool set because actually when you look at tools at all instances, there's a number of tools that need to be purged or at least moved to some uh, disabled, uh, should be hidden, that's what I mean. So uh, I, that should be one of the goals for one of the groups, probably for the tools group or maybe for scientific applications, the group is to review actually tools that are currently in that common set. Okay, good. I think we can collaborate together to, on that, yeah. Um, thanks, Jamaro. I think it's also a very good idea to actually put also something like determine sustainable uh, suitability of refgenie into the agenda and to spend some time to evaluate that um my only hint is that the d um the backend group has also on their agenda a topic to discuss more broadly object store and and storage as part of their backend work um so I would really encourage the admin group to team up with the backend group to make a joint meeting and discuss storage and object stores um, together. Okay. Okay. Um, I, to follow up on that, I will, I will set up a meeting at the end of month, this month, or maybe early February, loop uh, loop the back end people who are interested in storage and remote storage, um, and then I'll I'll CC the uh, admin team on that. One minute. Okay. Any so any objections to 
feasibility of these milestones. If not, let's move on. All right, so the backend group is next. Um, our project board is 11. Um, so we have three sort of main priorities. Um, there's many more details on the project board, but these are the three main things. Uh, so we want to modernize the Galaxy API. Um, we've looked at Fast API. We've already merged this. Galaxy can start um, under Fast API now. What this allows us, so it's it's an async framework. It's a modern framework. It's a framework at all because we didn't really use a framework before. Um, it gives us async routes um, and it gives us web sockets. So two modern technologies where we can use to improve um, things that should happen uh, quickly events. So the um, thing that we would need this for first would be history updates, uh, job updates, uh, things that should happen rapidly. Um, so the, that's what good, is good for. It's also using typing um, and it has a nice automated documentation generation, two things that, well, typing we haven't done before and automated documentation, always great because our documentation, especially for the API, is essentially just look at BioBlend, which is not the good strategy, I think. Not that BioBlend is bad, but um, Galaxy should have better documentation of its API. Um, and together with the async aspect is we need to get um, some legacy patterns in how we use SQL Alchemy, our, our database layer. Um, we need to rework those patterns so that we can use 1.4, which introduced um, async IO compatibility. So the milestones for that part are that Galaxy starts uh, under Unicorn or Ubicorn instead of Paste Uwiski um, optionally in 2105, and then we make the switch in 2109. Um, we will convert a few routes fully to Fast API. So uh, Fast API can already serve the old routes, but we want to make them better um, and document them fully. So that's ongoing. Uh, we want a WebSocket subscription endpoint, so you can just get like in real time updates as they happen on the server. Um, and one of the first things we need for uh, truly async routes is that we can do async uh, queries with SQL Alchemy. Um, so the next big priority is enhancement to how Mac Galaxy manages data. Uh, so that includes multiple quota. So if storage can come from multiple places, you need to track how much space can be used, uh, where can the job go and so on. Um, and uh, so the kinds of storage that we're thinking about here are mostly scratch storage, <coughs> uh, tape storage. Um, and so uh, we build an API um, to summarize the usage and work together with the UI UX group uh, to have a nice <coughs> visual representation um, of that. Uh, we will enhance the Galaxy Files plugin so that you can import and export history. Um, that will be a requirement for the Envelope project. Uh, two things that didn't exactly make it to like something that we will uh, accomplish in Q1, but that's still on the roadmap, is uh, import of data from user object stores and remote object stores. So um, that Galaxy can deal with data that it never imported, never generated metadata for. Um, that's required for ITCR. But that's a big project. And for that, we first need the quota in place. Um, but we will have regular meetings to discuss um, how we want to implement this um, with the people that are going to work on that. Um, so the milestones are that you can uh, configure multiple uh, storage uh, quotas so that they can be displayed, uh, that sharing will be disabled if data is somewhere where um, it, uh, it is in a private um, location for storage. We will have uh, history import and export to file plugins. Um, and we will have a plan for how we're going to move forward with user object stores and uh, remote data. And then the final priority is performance. Um, so that's going to be into collaboration with the testing and deployment teams. Uh, so we want to do performance testing that is closer to real big servers. Um, 
And we want to optimize how uh, the job throughput. And one of the limiting factors here is the state change. Um, so the two things here are a CI framework um, that we run with every pull request and that compares uh, before and after uh, and sort of finds what is regressing or did we make any nice improvements uh, so that we know that we're moving in the di right direction. And in the same way, if we have if we want to make big changes, but we're uncertain of like the impact that we have a standard way to look at this. We're out of time, um, Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, for the second part, we just link the jobs with the data set so that you just look at the job state directly instead of the workarounds we're doing now. So that's it. Can I ask uh, every group, so you're showing these slides, can you put them in the folder on the Google Drive where you're, uh... Uh, charter. Okay, no questions. Cancer informatics then. Hello folks, let me just share my screen here. Special hello to my European colleagues. Let's see. Boop. Okay, um, so this is the overall roadmap for cancer informatics. Ultimately, we want to have a sort of flavor of Galaxy portal for these analyses living at cancer.usegalaxy.org. So the initial push will be uh, towards that end. So we want to have a GVL based uh, Galaxy instance up that can use Google login that will eventually be tied to a fence instance, um, which is uh, yeah, Gen3 IDP. Um, we want to install cyclic immunofluorescent tools and workflows, which is a little more complex, not complex, but involved than it sounds since it's not just installing tool shed tools per se, but some various custom tools that live in various places and ad hoc hodgepodge things. So uh, smoothing that is part of that goal. Uh, in addition, uh, we need to be able to pull from disparate places that are these uh, data stores. Ultimately, these are humongous files like, I don't know, 80 gigabyte multi-layer TIFFs that need to be pulled in, analyzed, and then perpetuated somewhere, uh, the federated data promise. Uh, and then from there, uh, it gets a little more nebulous in terms of what we're going to do since planning super far ahead is uh, a bit tricky. But once we have an understanding of how to interact with these services, we'll uh, wrap that into a data browser to have a more user-friendly experience than SSHN pull, get on the local file system, import through Galaxy sort of rigmarole or something like that. Uh, then we were also very interested in interactive tools on this instance for it, it's a very visual uh, process, a lot of pictures and identifying regions and uh, multicolored magenta cell slides and things like that. So being able to have this interactivity is uh, key. Uh, and then, then from there, I suppose, once we have a stable instance, we're interested in looking at uh, other sorts of tools and data sources and analyses that uh, community folks might want to perform. So that's more in the long-term uh, scope of our roadmap. Yeah, and other canonical sources of data and CI, CRDC, so on and so forth. Uh, that's about the high and low of it. On your... Um... GitHub project page, uh, your Q1 tasks, are you planning to assign them to specific people? So admin group did this. Quite, thing. yes. Um, we are just have not gotten around to it, unfortunately. Okay, well, you probably want to get around it fairly soon, not before the end of Q1. Certainly, probably before the end of the week. Excellent. Deployment.
Okay, so uh, the list of stuff that we uh, pared it down to, I think, for the uh, first quarter here, um, the the top thing is to get uh, ITs enabled and and functional in GVL and Kubernetes-based deployments of of Galaxy. Um, and as part of that project, we'll end up writing up a fair amount of documentation and probably doing some refinement on how ITs work um, and some of the little uh, uh, annoyances with using them currently. Um, uh, another, another goal here is to be able to pip install Galaxy. Uh, for quarter one, that will most likely mean just pip installing the application. Um, and not the the uh, not having a solution for the client just yet, um, but uh, maybe for for Q two we'll be able to to come up with a a nice install method for the client. Um, the uh, uh, for GVL we'd like to be able to uh, switch the dataset store to um, Swift. Uh, whereas three back storage, this gives us the uh, for the groundwork for uh, Pulsar to direct stage to and from um, uh, object storage systems without Galaxy as the intermediary. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, in order to have uh, more defined installable Galaxy, uh, such as with pip install Galaxy, we need a more defined uh, Galaxy version. And so uh, we need to come up with uh, a procedure for creating point releases. So, you know, 20, 2101.1.2.3 um, and an a easy system for, you know, the, the people who are going to be in charge of creating those to, to create them and have all the packages built and pushed out. And that is it for deployment. Um, also, purely stylistic things here. So uh, the link, there is no link to this uh, project from your uh, charter document, as far as I can tell. Uh, maybe okay. Just, and also, can you stick it on the community hub page? So it's the, that link that uh, Dave shared, so it can be easily jumped to and just like with cancer informatics you don't really assign things to anybody so that probably yeah we're we're going to so we we tried to get a meeting together uh you know from the notice on tuesday but uh weren't able to find times for everyone in the in the group by today so uh we will do that within the next week to make sure that we don't fall behind here so basically three things add project to the google doc Add it to the um, hub page and assign tasks. Okay. We got a question for Nate if there's time. Please. Uh, so, uh, regarding the last point uh, in in the list, uh, so the uh, point releases, is the idea to basically replace uh, the way where we did basically. A, keep the, the branch and suggest to admin to keep the branch updated to move into uh, tags, or is this more connected with the pip installable Galaxy and so PyPy um, pi packages? Uh, I think if you're, gonna, if you're gonna use a clone, it, it would probably still make sense to, to just use the release branch, um, especially because we're, you know, that's, that's gotten higher and higher quality over time. So we, I, I don't think we need to worry too much about people not using an exact point release on there. Um, but certainly if you want to be very deterministic in, in your Galaxy and its version, um, then we will create Git tags for it and you can use those. So it's kind of connected with the PyPy installable Galaxy. Yeah, yeah, because the goal is, so, so you know, from these, you can also build system packages if you, a need to have a Galaxy installed on your cluster in order to, to run metadata and that sort of stuff. So for that, um, we need we need actual versions and stuff. Thank you. Yep. 
Okay. That means human genetics. Hello. So I, this is basically the same one as last time. Uh, we haven't assigned people like by name, but basically every person or almost every person in the group is in two other groups. So we're going to have a lot of collaborating with other groups. Um, so for example, one, I mean, yeah, uh, the Anvil tool set we're going to do with the tools group is just getting a list of tools that are verified to be working and then setting up the testing infrastructure to make sure that they stay working. Um, the integration is going to be with backend groups, mostly the Anvil FS plugin, which works, but is going to have to have some optimizing done and then um, enabling lighting back through the plugin. Um, interactive tools with the deployment group. It's going to be a little bit different in the GKE context just to have some GKE native things as opposed to the things that we do more generically for Kubernetes with the deployment group. So just translating that to GKE specifics. Um, deployment, uh, those one specific thing, or I guess two specific things that are only for Anvil, the Galaxy Cube man chart, which is right now what deploys the entire stack of um, NFS, Postgres, um, CVMFS and Galaxy onto GKE for Anvil. So that needs to be maintained and updated with when the new Galaxy Helm chart comes out for 2101. Um, so I wanna create a testing ecosystem to make sure that at any given time, Galaxy is deployable on Anvil. So we can set up clown jobs to run every day or something and make sure that on any given day, if somebody goes to Anvil, they can still launch Galaxy. Um, and we're already working with the build team on some optimizations. Um, and we've talked about some things that need to be done on the Leo side. And then some like maybe a little bit that we can still do on the Galaxy side, although we've gotten the startup to already be like about, I think, three minutes um, with everything from scratch on Galaxy side. So the bulk is now the seven minutes on the Leo side to deploy the cluster, which we need to cut down. Um, and then finally, just the uh, more science stuff of actually developing workflows and more use cases for Anvil. That's it for me. So again, just like in the previous presentation, there is, can you add this presentation to Drive? Uh, I assume you have uh, Anvil related um, GitHub board uh, project. Yes, yeah, so I added this. I added the same things there as the project board here. Um, okay. And we also have a, I'm not sure if it should stay private, but we have a private Anvil repository right now on Galaxy Project. Um, uh, well, yeah. I think if you link this to the Google Doc and to Hub page, that would be enough for now. So for that private one, we should actually migrate it to the Anvil project slash Galaxy repo and move that board. Um, but then, yeah, look it up. Um, one question about the tool set. Is there a document? I remember you were sharing it essentially as a Google Doc uh, of the tools, of curated set of tools. Is, is, that, is that somewhere? Oh, yeah. I mean, we still have the Google Doc that you marked tools with red and green. Uh, yeah. That was translated to basically we took a, well, I took a dump of the current CVMFS tool shed and then removed everything that was red. Uh, but we still need to run the entire tool tests on a new Anvil instance with all of the changes and make sure that those still work. And yeah, can you sense. add a link to this document to your either uh, you know Google project or? Uh, or your yep. Google Doc, because this is also something that tools people need to be aware of and admin people need to be aware of because that has implications to, for example, a common tool set. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll add it to the slides and to this project board. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, go ahead.
Dolphin, are you presenting or? I don't think we hear you or whoever is presenting. The... Sorry, I was muted. Oh, okay, here you are. Uh, so yeah, we haven't had the name of the people on the uh, GitHub project yet, but they are on, listed on the charter document in Google Drive uh, for the task assigned to everyone. Uh, so one of the main uh, projects is the community website that uh, Nick is working on. Uh, so the goal is to have a prototype uh, by the end of Q1, and uh, one of the milestones in this process is to have a document with a uh, description of the content structure and the website functionalities, and uh, setting on the system uh, that's going to be used for that platform. Uh, concerning the training and outreach video, uh, we're aiming to have video covering uh, analyze data and workflow interface. Uh, by the end of Q1, and include them in uh, GTN as a micro tutorial that can be linked uh, as a snippet uh, everywhere. And uh, we want to establish a calendar for the integration of automatic screenshots uh, by the end of Q1 to have more visibility for the next uh, following quarters. Uh, we are migrating the FIQ to training material. Uh, we start by uh, building a relationship map of all the FIQ to have a clear vision of what can go into the training material, uh, what are the priorities. Um, and at the same time, we're going to develop a template for the inclusion of troubleshooting into the GTN so that the next core phase, we can enroll people to uh, transfer easily from the FIQ to the template and uh, have it moving uh, quickly. So the next uh, co is going to happen with the paper cut uh, in February. Uh, so we need to advertise the event, prepare the agenda, and uh, broadcast the uh, recap of what's been done uh, by the two projects together. Uh, we want to send the GTN paper by the end of the quarter. Uh, so we also have TIAS uh, that's being deployed in other main, uh, in other galaxy instances. So we need to advertise more uh, where is where it is available and how to use it. Uh, we also want to uh, rework the code of conduct because we have noticed that uh, when we have conferences with Bosque, for example, we have more reported cases than when we are alone. So that might be due to uh, some lack in describing how to um, uh, report or how to identify problematic behavior. So we want to include some uh, more detail in the code of conduct. So by the end of the quarter, we want to have an idea of what are the points to improve, uh, to have a, a new code of conduct by the end of Q2 and uh, GCC. Um, we also want to work with the uh, Open Life Science project to advertise the projects that are linked to the GTN or uh, Galaxy. Uh, we have the gallantries going on. Uh, where, uh, by the end of Q1, we should have some uh, first results. And um, uh, so we need to request and process the feedback of people using it. Um, and then we have a Galaxy developer training that we're going to schedule, uh, and that's going to be discussed at our day round table, uh, probably this month or the next. And any question? What is galan What is gallantries? So gallantries is a galaxy for higher education, so uh, okay. teaching undergrads. Okay, uh, so you have uh, quite a few tasks. Are this a um, reasonable list for one quarter? Well, we have 15 to 20 people on the group, so. All right. Um, I have one question if you scroll all the way up on this. Uh, so with the videos, so videos covering workflow, these will be automatically generated ones, right? Uh, no. We don't know when the automatic one will be available. Uh, okay. Workflow will just be how to, so just the same as the interface for analyze data, but for- so Who is gonna be making them? Um, me, mostly. Okay, so we'll talk about that, yeah. So I, I can help there. 
Any other questions? That's time. Uh, Delphine also, again, will add the link to this project board to the- uh, It's in the Google Doc. It is, but it's not on the hub. Yeah. Okay, support. Hey, hold on a second. You're very purple. I'm very purple? Oh, hello. Okay, I think that's what I want. No, hold on. I'm sorry, I don't do this very often. <clears throat> And I'll be quick, so it'll be fine. Okay, sure. All right, can you guys see? Yep. Yeah, okay, so this is just our charter, um, but I redid it and I'll relink that to the hub. Um, so there's really just three of us right now. Um, so Ignacio and Igor, we just haven't a chance to get everyone wrapped up yet, so. I'm thinking like Q2. Um, and so primarily what we do is we do we give support, right? So uh, these are all the places where we, where we do that. And um, there's a bunch of tools and boards and all of that that exists. Um, and most of our collaborations are gonna be with the outreach and the training group. So, um, you know, we need to figure out who's going to be on the team and where we're going to track projects. And it might just be inside other projects. Um, that's fine. And then mapping the FAQs into a new structure is kind of a big deal. And we're going to prioritize that because everything else is based off that. So uh, we've started that. You saw Delphine listed that on the project board. Um, <clears throat> so there's two main tasks. Uh, it's to transfer the training material. This is exactly cloned off of the, the other working group that Delphine just showed. Um, and so we have a card on that project board. I can link that into here. And then the uh, second thing is that there's a webinar for advanced features. And I wanna make sure that all of these topics are migrated over into the GTN before we have the webinar so that we look like we're organized. So there's just a few things to do for that. Um, all of this is currently in the hub right now, and it, they, it looks like a big laundry list. There isn't a lot of graphics or anything else like that. So, um, and this hasn't really been, this has been discussed a little bit, but it hasn't been started. I'll probably be working on one, two, and three, or at least maybe half of one. So Anika and I will be discussing that. And then I put this in here and I moved it to Q2, um, but maybe this isn't us. So. And I know we wanted to curate the tool panel and we wanted to curate tools. And I really think that our tool tests are not enough and the GTN tutorials aren't enough. We should look at actually like how the tools are actually performing on the server. So are they passing or failing? You know, is there a usage problem? And so I kind of details in here, um, <clears throat> finding technical issues and then what to do about it, you know, tag it, deprecate it, hide it, remove it, fix it. Does it need something fixed? Um, and then go back and look at tools that have uses to issues so that uh, we can look at the ones that fail a lot. And then we know what kind of responses we've given to users about that. And does it need more tool help? Just can, and what can be directly incorporated into Galaxy? So all of the, all of the FAQs going into the, uh, the, the, G, the GTN is as like a tutorial, that might not always be the best place. It might be better to put it um, on the help or the tool form itself or on the tool help. There's a little question mark next to tools that uh, isn't always utilized. And so I think we could, we, could, we could leverage that. And so if you've got a problem with a particular tool, we've got sort of documents around that about what like the most common problems. So I think we can include that directly in. So maybe whoever works on this 
curation, we could be, um, we, we could help inform that with actual, like, like, here's the numbers, here's the versions of the tools, this is the, how many times it's used successfully or not, and here's why. So we can kind of give a breakout of like why it's failing or why it's, why it's difficult to use or why people keep asking about it. So um, all of this is just sort of like a wish list of things that I think we'd need to do, but um, it's, it can't, there's no way that I can do it in Q1. It's, so there are two things uh, that, um, so one of them is, you probably want to decrease the volume of um, issues that you're dealing with. And one of the ways of doing this is that we need reliable statistics for tool usage. Uh, we don't have this form, I mean, we don't have it in a presentable form for main, but uh, probably EU and AU uh, and Australian ones have that. We can at least use this as the initial blueprint for figuring out which tools are used and which aren't. Uh, this is one of the priorities for admin group to uh, use right. to, to do this for main. That's time. And, and, and another thing is that um, unified tool sets, so you sort of need to keep an eye on that. Right. So I think we're not going to be able to start that until Q2. So I just, there's, there's so much to get started for Q1. Um, okay. And I so, really want that webinar to be well. So I, and we're going to need to get a, we're going to get to have to get more people involved, right? So if you can help get connected with, I think we need tools. I think we're going to get need UI, UX, admin, and I see now there's a scientific group. Okay. So, I think we, want to get involved so we, we need to keep moving because we have um, That's fine. a number of groups left. Thank you. Um, so, okay, so I will briefly talk about scientific applications. This is the group which has a lot of people and it's notably absent from hub. Um, so I will fix all of these issues. Um, the objective of this group, if I can share this document here. Is to, is to highlight galaxy, highlight real but examples of real biological problems that were shown with Galaxy, that were solved with Galaxy. So the, really the goal of this group is to, is to write biological papers with a Galaxy angle. Um, and some of the immediate goals for Q1 is finishing our SARS-CoV-2 efforts and getting the VGP and pan genome related tools identified, wrapped, assembled the workflows and uh, tested. And I'll update all the documents and create the board. Um, for the uh, testing and hardening group, um, basically it's the same objectives that we, for quarter one that we presented uh, before the break, um, we put them into a project board. Um, Marius already talked about the performance suite, but we've got that broken down into chunks that we'll be able to sort of accomplish useful things in quarter one, but sort of assemble them to the, to the finished working product in quarter two. Um, and then uh, release testing is the other big thing, I guess, that hasn't been touched on yet. Uh, we got 2101 coming out and uh, we, uh, I guess Sergey is gonna relieve the effort to get that release tested. Um, and I think otherwise though, nothing has changed since, since the last time we presented. So I'll see the rest of my time unless there are questions. No questions to John. Tools. All right, so we currently have one major priority and then based on how long and how big that one ends up being, we have several smaller things and part of our decision for how we're gonna deal with, uh, with Q1 is actually specifically determine what roles we're taking with uh, Ponemo and tool use with training uh, for uh, for new tool wrappers. Um, 
and a couple other things. So, for example, we're looking at, at discussing tool uh, like IUC specific uh, hackathons and paper cut days. There is a list of 35 ish tools that were listed uh, as part of the uh, as part of VG as being used in VGP, several of which are not licensed uh, in such a way that we would be able to wrap them, but most of them are several of which we already have. We don't have specific names yet because we're all kind of reading through each of the tools. Um, some of them are extremely large from what I understand and will not be able to be put on on, on certain servers for obvious reasons because uh, extreme memory usage and time requirements. So to that end, we have not assigned yet, but we're planning to get all of these, or at least as many of these as possible wrapped by Q1 with the goal of having at least one of the little files that have that are wrapped in the VGP uh, pipelines as runnable as a workflow in Galaxy. Just a quick comment. If you have any questions about these, um, I think I, my group has a lot of experience with like all of these. In fact, we've published a few of these. Perfect. Uh, and this is I actually wanted to ask Mike about this. Uh, is so, uh, are is any are any of these projects still uses 10x? I don't think so. I mean, we're in the uh, transition period, so the company 10x has discontinued their linked read. Um, uh, kit, but there are other um, more or less equivalent technologies out there that people are interested to use. So I think it's, I think there's a lot of legacy data that's still out there. In principle, a lot of these tools could be used for these other approaches, but it's, it's a valid question. And also for the tools that re require a lot of memory, you're probably talking about some of the assemblers that we yeah, yeah. Uh, But We're uh, looking to yeah, we're looking to wrap those and then probably make them well, like put them in the tool shed, but on, but not actually put them on any major server so that people can choose to run them locally or on a cloud instance that they can launch. Yeah, we we, we have to well, we need to wrap them first, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, so how did this uh, tool set? How did VGP um, get picked as the priority for Q1? and then the tools following from that? It's a rapidly evolving area, uh, which is fueled by advances in long read sequencing. And uh, the, it's priority because we need to get on that train as soon as possible. Because right now, Galaxy is really good for Illumina data, but it's not that useful if you have PegBio or Oxford Nanopore. I mean, I'm talking about main tool set. Uh, and this needs to change because if we don't uh, adapt to these technologies, we are we're just, we won't be able to be uh, on the top. But what is your concern, Ines? Just, uh... I mean, I'm wondering what, you know, what, what's the, are we using tools or are we installing or adding tools that are sort of required by many, um, are they popular? Because every time I look at EU, um, there's, you know, they have a human cell atlas version, they have the Nanopore server, they have the RNA one, there's like a dozen different servers. And on main specifically, it's, it's, Frankly, I don't know. I mean, I don't know enough about tools, but it feels like a hodgepodge um, of things that are fairly dated. Uh, um, and so just, are we getting these requests from the help? Are we getting them from the literature? Are we getting them from, you know, just uh, include more of the so hodgepodge, user feedback or something? Uh, this is, so to answer that question is that we're going to do a review tool set. And so what's going to be at usegalaxy.star uh, CVMFS will not be a hodgepodge. Uh, the question with the multiple faces of .eu, that's a great question. I think we were sort of resistant. We can do this, I suppose. 
who are resisting towards this for some technical reasons? I, well, I think uh, what we wanted to do was pursue the, the tool sets in exactly. the toolbox in a single instance. And that's sort of work in progress that's not currently on our priority roadmap, but could definitely be pushed. So the, uh, the idea there is to tag tools and be able to pull, for example, RNA-seq tools and so on. I don't know if we can, in, in the short term, to enable EU-like functionality. I, I'm, I'm not sure whether technically we can do this on main. That's a question to Bjorn and Nate, really. You're at time. OK. But yeah, technically, uh, it's not difficult. So if we wanted to go that route in the interim, we certainly could. I think we should go this round in the sh in the meantime. I, I think that's that's we should we should do that. Well, let, let's let's talk about that. I, I don't think we can put it on Q1, but we should do it. Sure. And another thing on VGP is that we're trying to become members of this consortium, which will be a very uh, good uh, publicity uh, thing for Galaxy Project in general. So, uh, and plus it's a great project. It's an interesting open project for sequencing all vertebrates. And at this point they're using commercial um, tools, well, commercial, uh, the workflow tools, they're using DNA Nexus. And what we want to bring is the public free distributed um, functionality system. Okay, UI. All right, did that start sharing? It's in all these. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so I took, uh, or we took all of the priorities from our roadmap, put them on this GitHub board. Um, the first column is the sort of meta information column that uh, the intent is to have some, some information here. And then we'll, these are just the top level things. The board is gonna be pretty active and things will move across it like you'd expect, um, but the idea is that each of these top level items in the far left column is checked off by the end of the quarter. Sorry if you hear babies. Um, so uh, it's mostly the same stuff we talked about last time. The new history, um, we've already merged it uh, and it's in beta mode for 2101. Um, we're gonna do a group review to sort of just walk through it, pick particular tasks, test them out um, and build an issue list that we will then resolve uh, during quarter one. Um, and uh, then swap it in as primary interface during Q1 for a 2105 release. So in 2105, the new history will be the history. Um, the second priority is, collapse these things. Um, the second priority is the workflow invocation interface. Uh, a lot of work has already been done on this, but it basically provides all of the details about a workflow invocation in one component. Um, uh, so the initial PR is actually ready to go really early in the quarter. Uh, so we need to add some tests and probably do a little bit of polish and refinement. Um, and then that's, that's, so that's the second priority there. Um, batch operations is one that's uh, maybe a little bit more ambitious because no work has been done on it at all yet. Um, we need to figure out a list of desired operations um, and then implement a sort of generic operation API, uh, kind of like in Gmail where you say, apply this to all matching emails to flag them or filter them or delete them like I do. Um, and then we need, we want to integrate that in the new history. Don't, not even bothering with the old one. Um, I, I should, I should note that most, all of these cards actually do have people associated with them down if you dig in, uh, or almost all of them. Um, we have uh, a goal to get some collections UX improvements in. Um, we decided that four items resolved out of the big project board is a good benchmark. Um, so we're going to do that. Uh, IGV.js, uh, we want to integrate that as a first as a charts visualization in Galaxy. Um, this basic single track IGV.js visualization is pretty much done. Um, adding multiple tracks, uh, there, there are some issues in the charts framework that uh, we ran into, but anyway, so to resolve that and then have uh, parameter driven uh, viewport and, and things like that piped through without reloads is, is on, the, on the map. Um, and then tool form viewification. The idea is not to viewify the whole tool form. That's a big project. In Q1, we want to figure out the right strategy for replacing items, uh, considering their, the impact that they'll have across the application because multiple places use uh, some of the widgets, right? Um, so, and then we want to pick one element uh, and convert it as a prototype for you know, distributing the rest of them in Q2 and then finishing up the form. Um, so that's just sort of a, a baby step towards that project with a with an eye to Q2. 
um, the new user welcome. Uh, this is returning to that uh, that project where you know first time user gets instead of the standard welcome, they get a sort of a dashboard with uh, curated content for a new user showing them how to use Galaxy. Um, and then uh, this this is maybe a bit of a stretch goal, but to to, to really lean into per instance configurability. Um, so that you know EU could have their own new user welcome and things like that. Um, and then lastly, a library's UX review. Uh, we have a big board. So user, you, uh, data libraries went through a big overhaul fairly recently um, with, with Oleg's viewification there. Uh, and we, have, we, we also have a board that identified a whole bunch of issues with the old data libraries. Um, but basically, we, the goal for this task for Q1 is just to, to go through and get organized there and figure out where we need to take data libraries in Q2. It's not necessarily to do a ton of work on data libraries. And that's it. Uh, it. It sounds like a lot, but it's a pretty big group. Um, and they're pretty reasonably sized projects, some of which have already had uh, a, a lot of work done to them. So, yep. I think ITs, like the UX around ITs, is possibly missing from this list. Uh, that was not in our priorities list here and we were advised not to add priorities. Um, I mean, it can still get done, but it, it's not on this list. We're, we're, I mean, obviously UI UX is a huge category and we're gonna do a lot of stuff that's not on this list and that can be one of those things. I, I would argue that this is more important than library UX um, because for, I mean, the uh, ITs I think that's a different kind of project, though. This is not development at all. The library UX review is not development. If anything, I would say the batch operations, we could just push to Q2 and well, focus that's, on. That's actually even more important than ITs. <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, uh, OK. It's, it's very painful to use Galaxy when you have very large histories, and that would address uh, all of these issues. So uh, some of this stuff with ITs was waiting on, oh, we're at time. I don't want to go over. We can still, we can follow up on that and try to get it done. Okay, well, any questions to any group? I also, because what, what, what I don't want, what I don't like about this meeting is that sort of I'm, I'm talking here and that creates an impression that it's all about Maine, but in fact, the list of people here is much bigger than the, 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 the Galaxy, so please, any other questions from anybody else? Are we, is there anything missing? And, and you see any potential connections and so on? I mean, um, I would like to ask all groups to add their project links to the hub and to Google Docs. So it's uniform. So we can look at them. It would be nice if all the projects also have a uniform structure, but that's not necessary. But as long as everybody knows where they are. And may I ask Dave and Bea to put the meetings of all groups to Galaxy Calendar. So everybody knows when the groups are meeting. For example, I personally would like to participate in uh, you know, tool, uh, meetings, for example, in UI meetings. Yeah, I can coordinate that. Any other things we're missing? Anything we can make this better? Any suggestions? I have maybe a question to the working groups. Um, is it working that you can define dependencies on other working groups? Can we facilitate that process or is that fine? So example, again, um, that the backend group needs to deliver something that the front end group needs to consume. Is that working okay? Or do you need to have help in facilitating that somehow? For that one in particular, I think it helps because a lot of us are in both of those groups. Um, I, so it may not be the best example, but yeah, I don't see any problems there. But in more general, when, when the overlap is not so high, is that still working or? 
I don't know that, I mean, at least for, for stuff that I'm involved in, I haven't tried yet, but uh, we might need something. I don't know. I think the ITs was probably a good example, right? We, we mentioned that we have some stuff that needs to be worked on, but then no plan to actually do that. So to support the intergroup stuff, we have the point person listed on the hub page, and we also have a WG-all, um, excuse me, getter channel. So it's not gonna solve our problems, but it will help. Okay, so um, I didn't say new year because new year for the project begins right now. That's the, that's the January one for our so happy new year. And thank you everybody. And uh, we'll post that recording so we know what was happening if we forget. Happy new year. Thanks everyone, bye. bye.